Thank you, Abba Father. Have your way, sweet Holy Spirit. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. A louder amen. A glorious amen. A Jericho pulling that amen. Happy Sunday to every one of you. And happy Mother's Day. Are there mothers in the house? Please celebrate yourself. Stand on your feet. Clap and celebrate yourself. Hallelujah. Let's have our seats. Praise God. Today is Mother's Day. And the theme of our Mother's Day is a supernatural mother. Not just an ordinary mother. But a supernatural one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have a woman sitting beside you, or you are sitting beside a woman, turn to that woman and tell that woman, say, look at me very well. Take a look at me. Because at the end of this service, I am changing level from the natural to the supernatural. That will be your testimony in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, shout a louder amen. A supernatural mother. A supernatural mother is a woman that sees things beyond the natural law. A supernatural mother is a mother that sees things beyond the natural law. She is a woman that sees things beyond scientific understanding. She sees things beyond scientific what? Understanding. A supernatural mother is a mother that is spiritual. They say the spiritual control the physical. So a supernatural mother is a mother, is a woman that is what? Spiritual. The supernatural realm is the realm where God dwells. And is the realm where God operates. Is the realm where God dwells and operates. So for us to walk in the supernatural, we must walk in that realm. Because that's where God operates from. That's where God sees things from. Supernatural realm is the realm where the heaven and the earth mingle together. The supernatural realm is the realm where the heaven and earth intermingle. The supernatural realm is the realm where God interacts with man. Where man and God interact. And God wants every one of his children. God wants every one of his sons. God wants every one of his daughter to walk in that realm. Not until you walk in the supernatural realm. You cannot understand the things of the spirits. You cannot understand the ways of God. Because the ways of God is totally different from the ways of man. The way we think as a man is different from the way God thinks. So for us to walk in the supernatural, we must walk in that realm. We must see things from that realm. We must operate from that realm. I pray for somebody this morning. God will take you from the natural realm into the supernatural realm so that you will be able to dominate your world, dominate your environment, dominate your home, dominate your business. In the mighty name of Jesus. So we must walk in the supernatural realm. Because the supernatural realm is the unseen realm. It's a realm that we cannot see. You might see things physically and judge them the way you see them. But somebody that sees things from the spiritual realm, from the supernatural realm, we see it from a different angle. So the supernatural realm is a realm of the unseen. The supernatural realm is superior to the physical realm. 
That's why as a child of God, you don't conclude by what you see. Because there are more of the things unseen than the things you see with your physical eyes. That's why the Bible says faith is a substance of things that we hope for. Hallelujah. The supernatural realm is a realm that is superior to the physical realm. The supernatural realm, they say, control the physical. So we have to be spiritual. We have to walk in the spiritual realm in order to control the physical realm around us. In order to control the circumstance around us. In order to control the situation around us. Looking at the obstacle, looking at the situation, looking at the circumstance, we not change it, but looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. So if you fail to walk in the supernatural realm, in this era, when the world is moving and changing very fast in a pace, then you will be frustrated. You will be frustrated. You will be fixed. You will struggle. Because why? If you don't understand the spiritual realm, it will be difficult to walk in the physical realm. Hallelujah. Now let's look at some roles. Some roles. As a mother, as a woman, some roles we need to play in order for us to walk in the supernatural realm. Every woman, every woman that God has created has an important role to play. Every woman has an important role to play in our home and in the society. That's why in the book of Genesis 2, verse 18, God made the woman to be what? A helpmate. So the woman has a role to play in the home and in the society. And for her to play this role perfectly, she must be a woman that is supernatural. She must be a woman that understands supernatural things. She must be a woman that sees things from the supernatural realm for you to play the role very well. Let's look at number one. Number one, a supernatural woman is a woman who lives and builds a home under the influence of the Holy Spirit. In order for you to play your role as a woman, as a mother in your home and in the society, you must be a woman that walk under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Not the influence of the flesh. Not what your flesh is telling you. In fact, the way my body is telling me now, eh, it's just to go and fight that woman. In fact, the way my body is telling me now, I need to go and block my husband in his place of work. You don't walk by the flesh. She's a woman that is influenced by the Holy Spirit. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. The Bible says not by might, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit said the Lord. So you can't do it by your own power. You can't do it by your own knowledge. You can't do it by your own wisdom. You need the help of the Spirit. You need the help of the Holy Spirit. You need the help of the Holy Spirit to tell you what to do. To teach you how to do it. To tell you what to say. To tell you how to handle that issue in your home and in your family. So you must be influenced by the Holy Spirit. That means you must open your heart to the Holy Spirit to lead you. Not you will say today, in fact, I want to drop my Bible. Let me put Bible aside. Let's dig it. No, 
But a woman that will always ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what do I do? How do I handle this issue? How do I go about this? Holy Spirit, tell me what to do. She is not in control of herself. But she's under the control of the Spirit of God. So it is what the Spirit of God lay in her heart. She does. Not when the Spirit of God is telling you, do this, you say, no, this one will not work. I beg, let's put Bible aside. This will not be a matter of Christianity. Let's, let me handle this one physically. You must yield yourself to the leading of the Holy Spirit if you must walk in the supernatural. That issue in your home, that issue in your family, that issue that you are going through, have you prayed about it? Have you asked the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit, how do I go about this? Holy Spirit, how do I come out of this? Or you are using your own wisdom. You are using your own knowledge. Or you are getting advice from friends. Let me go and meet that my friend. She will tell me what to do. Is your friend the Holy Spirit? The Bible says not by might. Not by power. But by what? The Spirit of the living God. For you to walk in the supernatural as a man and as a woman, you must yield yourself totally to the leading of the Holy Spirit to direct you, to speak to you, to tell you what to do. And when he tells you and you obey, victory is sure. I pray for you this morning. That grace to always yield to the Holy Spirit. That grace to always surrender to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Receive it this morning in the name of Jesus. If your amen is louder, so shall it be in the name of Jesus. So you must yield yourself totally to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. Let him direct you. Number two. A supernatural woman is a woman who is not afraid. She is not afraid. Because why? She is walking with the supernatural God. She is walking with the Holy Spirit. She is not walking alone. She is not doing things alone. So when trouble comes, when issue arise, she is not afraid because she has a backup. She has who she will always turn to, to get answer. So a supernatural woman is a woman who is not afraid of circumstances. She's not afraid of trouble. When trouble comes, she smiles over it because she knows there is a God that is backing her up. A supernatural woman is a woman who deals with fear completely from her life. In the book of Matthew, chapter 14, verse 27, talking about Peter, who walked on the sea to Jesus. He said, but straight away, Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good share. It is I. Be not what? Afraid. So you must keep fear from your life. As a man, as a woman, who want to walk in the supernatural, fear must die. Not when you see crocroach, you carry all the anointing oil in the house and begin to pour on it. That is fear. That is fear. That is not faith. That is what? Fear. You must be bold. You must be bold. You must keep fear. Fear is a robber of blessing. Fear is what blocks people from moving out for God. I wish Peter was afraid. Others were there, but it was only Peter that took the bold step and said, if Jesus can walk on the sea, I too can walk. I too can walk to him. So you must keep fear out of your life. As a man and as a woman, you must keep fear if you must come out. Don't be afraid of that business. You are afraid whether it will not work. You are afraid whether you will lost. You are afraid, you are afraid, you are afraid. Yes, it's going. Time is going. Time wait for nobody. Take that move. 
do that business. Take that move. Go out for that adventure. God is backing you up. Do not be afraid. Jesus stretched forth his hand to Peter and said, Come. Don't be afraid. I am the one. Don't be afraid. Take the step. Come, I'm behind you. And God is speaking to somebody this morning. That decision you are about to make, and you are afraid. That business that you are about to start, and you are afraid. That avenger that you are about to begin, and you are afraid. Jesus is telling you this morning, don't be afraid. I am behind you. I am behind you. Take the step, and there shall be testimony at the end. Fear is a torment. Until you overcome fear, it will keep you in shame. You remain in one place. Your mates are moving forward. Your mates are making progress. You are afraid to take the step. You are afraid to try. Try it. Even when you're afraid, try again. One day you will get it right. I'm talking to somebody this morning. If you are that person, shout it louder. Amen. So you must keep fear totally. The Proverbs 31 woman, in the book of Proverbs 31, verse 21, Proverbs 31, verse 21, the Proverbs 31 woman is a woman of boldness. Proverbs 31, verse 21, says she is not afraid of the words of the snow for her household, for all her household are words clothed with what? Scarlet. The Proverbs 31 woman, is a woman that is bold. She is not afraid. When people are complaining, no cash anywhere, no money anywhere, she believes the God she serves because she knows that the God she serves will never disappoint her. She knows that the God she serves will never fail her. She believes in the God she serves because the Bible says when men say, there is a casting down to me and my household, it shall be what? A lifting up if only you believe. Many of us, we fail to believe. We doubt. We fail to believe. We are full of fear of the tomorrow. How will tomorrow look like? Don't worry about the tomorrow. Just have a God behind you. The tomorrow will come and it will be a testimony. The tomorrow will come and it will be a testimony. So the Proverbs 31 woman, she's not afraid of her household. She's not afraid of what is happening in the society. She's not afraid of what is happening in the country. Hey, this thing that is happening now. Hungry will just kill us. We will die in hunger. She's not afraid because she knows the God that she's serving. The supernatural woman, number three, is a woman of faith and desire. The supernatural woman is a woman of faith. She has a strong faith in God. She has a strong faith in God. Matthew 14, verse 28. From the scripture we just read, Peter had faith in God, in Jesus. That's why he was able to come to him. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. So a supernatural woman and a supernatural man is a man, is a woman of faith and desire. Peter desired to walk like Jesus on the water. And he has the faith that if Jesus can walk on it, I too can walk on it. And he, he bid on Jesus to, what? to let him come. And he was able, among others, he was able to walk on that water. That water that is surrounding you surrounding your business, surrounding your family that look as if you want to sink you today you shall arise and walk out of it in the name of Jesus you shall arise and walk out of that battle in the name of Jesus you shall arise and walk out of that problem in the name of Jesus you shall arise and walk out of that sickness that want to sink you in the name of Jesus if you believe it, shout a louder Amen so a supernatural man a woman is a woman of what? Faith and what? Desire. You can and we never experience the supernatural until you believe and until you desire it. You must believe it and you must desire to walk in the supernatural. 
Proverbs 31, verse 14. Talking about the Proverbs 31 woman. She's a woman of faith. She's a woman of faith. Say she guided her loins with strength. And strengthened her what? Aham. She's a strong woman. A woman of desire. A woman that desires to be great. A woman that desires to be better than her equal. A woman that desires to separate herself from the crowd. To be different from every other woman. Every other woman were complaining bitterly. Going through one pain or the other. But she make up her mind that no. I will guide all my strength. I will guide myself with strength. And she did. And she stood out as a woman with a difference in the Bible. Somebody shout hallelujah. So faith is not theory. Faith is not what? Theory. Faith is action. You must make up your mind to take action. Not confessing it alone, but take the bold step. Take the bold step over that business. Take the bold step to expand that business. Take the bold step over your home, over your family. Peter took the bold step to walk on the sea, to walk to Jesus. And he did. Because why? He desired it. And he had the faith to do so. So faith is action. Faith is taking action. Not theory. So you have to move first so that God can move next. You have to move first. So God is waiting for you to move. That business, God is waiting for you to move. God is waiting for you to take that step. Then he will take the next one to follow you. But many of us who are sitting down, Praying and praying and praying and casting, speaking in tongues, binding, binding, without taking any action, without taking any move. And God is waiting for you to take a move so that He will follow you and prove Himself in your life, and prove Himself over that contract, and prove Himself over that business. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. So they receive grace. I say receive grace Amen. to take that step, Amen. to take that bold step, Amen. and God will prove himself in your life. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Number four, a supernatural woman is a woman who keeps her eyes on Jesus. Not on the storm. Looking at the circumstance won't change it. Crying over that situation won't change it. Murmuring over that situation won't change it. Weeping over that situation will not change it. The only thing that will change it is when you look unto Jesus. Lift up your eyes from the storm. Lift up your eyes from the problem. Peter look unto Jesus. He did not look at the water. Hey, this water, if I put my leg now, will I not sink? He refused to look at the water. He was looking straight to Jesus. He refused to look at the circumstances surrounding him. He refused to look at the sickness. He refused to look at the obstacle. He looked unto Jesus. And he was able to walk on the sea. Today I pray for you. As you look unto the God of free indeed. As you look unto the God of free indeed. As you look unto the God of God's delight. As you look unto the God of our daddy that is Jamaki goes so to. You will not sink in that problem in the name of Jesus. But you are coming out with testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. Proverbs 31. Verse 25. Looking unto Jesus. The altar. That problem in your home. Are you looking unto Jesus? Or you are looking unto your friend to give you advice, to tell you what to do, to tell you how to deal with your husband, to tell you how to handle your husband. Or you are looking unto Jesus. Talking about the Proverbs 31 woman. This woman he said, strength and honor are our what? Clothing. She wears strength like dress, like a gown, like a wrapper. She puts on strength and honor as her what? Her clothing. And she shall rejoice in time to come. That will be your testimony in the name of Jesus. As a man, as a woman, that will be your testimony in the name of Jesus. 
So a supernatural man and woman is a woman who clothes herself with strength, with honor, to take step, to take both step over her home, over her family. Hallelujah. So looking at the obstacle won't change anything. But it will make you to sink. It will make you to be depressed. It will make you to be frustrated. It will make you to be confused the more. But when you lift up your eyes from that problem, from that obstacle, from that battle, and you look unto Jesus, before you know it, you will just surprise. Ah, this problem is no longer there. How did God do it? Because why? You fail to look at the problem, but you look unto Jesus. Because when you look unto him, he will never put you to shame. He will never disappoint you. It will never disappoint you. It will never put you to shame. Tonight, this afternoon, receive grace to look unto Jesus. Many of us will say we look unto Jesus, but truly we are not looking unto him. We have other things that we look unto. We have other option. Option B. If this one did not work, I will try this one. Make Jesus your all and all. Whether it work, it does not work. There's a song that the choir sang. Whether he good, whether he bad, you go be my God, no negotiation. Hallelujah. So whether he's good or bad, you make up your mind that Jesus, you are my all in all. No going back, no looking back. Hallelujah. Now let's quickly rush how to walk in the supernatural. How to walk in the supernatural. Number one, raise your level of supernatural expectancy. Raise your level of supernatural words. Expectancy. Expect more. Expect more from God. He is more than able to do that wish you ask or you think. So you must raise your level of supernatural expectancy from the natural level. Number two, you must develop your supernatural eyesight. You must not see things the way the normal person will see it. You must not judge things from the physical. This is how it is now. Is it not what you are seeing? The, the child is sick. He's having a dick. But somebody that sees things from the spiritual realm will say, my child cannot have a dick. It's the enemy of my child that have a dick. My child cannot have a dick. But the physical person will say, this child have a You are seeing this child. Are you not seeing the dick? You are seeing the child crying in pain. There's somebody that sees things from the spiritual realm. We all watch the drama. What happened? The supernatural mother and the natural mother. Don't and take Panadol and sleep. Then look at what happened. But the supernatural mother does not take things for granted. Anything she sees is a suspect. The enemy cannot take her unaware. She sees things from the spiritual angle. When she looks at the situation, we say, Yes, yes, yes. I know where this thing is coming from. She knows how to handle it. Hallelujah. So you must develop your what? Spiritual eyesight. You must not take things for granted. Hallelujah. Number three. Break through natural limitation. You must break through natural what? Limitation. There are physical things you will see around you that is a limitation. But you must gather your faith to break through those limitations. You must walk according to what the word of God says and not walk according to what doctor says or what the situation is saying or what the country is saying or what the state is saying. But what the Bible says. And if you walk in that manner, it will begin to work for you. You will see it manifest in your life. Hallelujah. Number four, you must miraculous meet the desperate need of people. Talking about giving. For you to walk in the supernatural, you must be a giver. The proverb 31 woman was a giver. She gives to the poor. She gives to the needy. That make her superior. That make her supernatural. That took her from the natural realm to the supernatural realm. So you must learn to be a giver. Learn to meet the need of people. As you meet the need of people around you, God begin to meet your needs. God begin to meet those needs that you cannot do for yourself. As you begin to do for what others cannot do for themselves, God begin to do for what you cannot do 
for yourself. I pray receive that grace this morning in the name of Jesus. Number five, you must recognize demonic stronghold and tear them down. You must recognize demonic stronghold around your home, around your family, around your husband, around your life and be able to what? Break them down. Don't recognize them and be afraid. Don't recognize them and begin to run. Let us get her. Don't recognize them and begin to run. Recognize them and deal with them because God has given you the power to overcome. God has given you the power to overcome every obstacle, every situation in your life. Proverbs 31 woman, in Proverbs 31 verse 10, say who can find, who can find a supernatural woman, who can find a vicious woman, who can find a vicious woman, for a price is far above rubies. A price is far above rubies. She's not just every other woman. She's not just like every other woman. She paid price for her family. She paid price for her children. She paid price for her husband. She's a woman that a price is what? Is far above ruby. She sacrificed for her home. Sacrificed for her family. Sacrificed for her children. She stand at a gap in prayer. She's a washman. Wash woman over her home. The proverb 31 woman. Her price is far. She's not common. She's not like every other woman. She's different. She handles things different. She sees things different from the supernatural realm, from the spiritual realm. She goes extra mile to sacrifice for her children. Who are you as a woman? Are you a supernatural woman or a natural woman? As a woman, can your child call you, Mommy, please pray. See what I am going through. Because that child believes in your prayer. She knows that you are a prayer warrior. She knows that you can stand at the gap. Or she will look for somebody else to, to call. We say, if I call my mother now, she will not pray. She will not really take it serious. Let me look for somebody. If you are that kind of woman, you are faith as a mother. Are you that kind of woman that your husband will call and say, my wife, where are you? Please pray. Look at what I'm going through. And you will pray. From today, receive that grace. To rise from the natural to become a supernatural woman. Receive that grace to rise from the natural to become a supernatural man in the name of Jesus. Because that is the realm God dwells and God wants us to dwell in that realm so that we can understand his ways and enjoy the blessing that is tied to the supernatural. Stand on your feet and lift up your hands. I begin to tell God, Father, give me the grace 